Do you feel the investment case is so good that it makes sense that you are attractive for being sold or for a takeover or a merger down the road? That is a question to uh, to speculate around, but I would say, okay, if if you're a listed company, um, at least I would think so, we try and run it as cost efficiently and attractively we can. And uh, I think you're very quickly, uh, if, you, if you're a public company, um, I think you're very quickly called out if you're running a suboptimal operation in terms of cost or financing or maybe even, even strategy. So I think uh, if people speculate uh, uh, that uh, something might happen in the future, I would take it as a compliment. Hopefully we're doing something right. Uh, I certainly hope that we wouldn't be the grounds of such speculation because we are we are doing it completely wrong. So, uh, yeah, I, I focus on on developing and growing the company, and I can say that in terms of cost base and and financing, we we're competing with anyone out there, um, and also with companies which are much bigger than us yeah. uh, in in market cap and, and number of ships. And uh, we stack up well. Um, I think uh, I think we have the lowest cost uh, of financing. If you look at our setup with um, our new buildings today, uh, the ships on the water, I can't see anyone competing uh, with us on on uh, on cost of capital and duration and predictability. And our cost base, otherwise, on running the ships is low. So. Uh, having said that, I I don't mind uh, people uh, speculating, but it's it's not really my focus. It's more it's more on uh, how can we develop the the company and the fleet, mm. and, and how how do we how how do we actually do on on return on equity? And okay, two thousand twenty four is not done, and and I think uh, maybe this year so far the the cape sizes are are, are top of the list, but. In the five years past, um, I think bell ships, if not, uh, mm. have been uh, uh, number one actually in terms of total return. Uh, so if you look at the share price and take into account the dividends paid um, over the past five years, we've been we've been on top. So um, yeah, it's also the, the attractive part here is that since the new buildings are leased, you have a great optionality as well to take different decision paths down the line based on what's most attractive. Yeah, and that's that's an in, uh, that's an increasingly uh, interesting option for uh, for us because now we have okay, let's say uh, uh, 29 ships on the water and we have 12 new buildings to come. So we have one and all of it's financed. So we're not we're not we don't have to raise any equity or any debt to take delivery of 12 ships. Uh, and I think there is, there is no other company, uh, stock listed dry bulk company, which has uh, more than 30% growth lined up uh, without any equity needed or, or, or debt financing. Uh, and then we can take that new building program and de take delivery of it, and it will represent growth in our earnings and fleet and Alternatively, we can look at our existing fleet, and if you then take, okay, we have 12 new buildings coming over the next uh, three, four years. If you look at our older ship today is 2015 built. That's still a modern ship today, but if you then look over the next three, four years, we could sell one or two or three ships per year against the new buildings lined up, and then you have uh, a very interesting capital allocation possibility where we can sell uh, older ships which have uh, rather low debt and some of them are debt free and then we are taking delivery of new buildings which are fully financed you potentially have a, a pretty significant amount of capital uh, which can be freed up so this duality is something that uh, we look forward to to uh, to considering over the next three four years and i think we're the only company who has that uh, optionality actually uh, lined up.